Hi, I'm Kelly Ellis, VP of Global Industry Relations for Renati, here with Mark Hill, co-director of the UK and EU for Renati. He's been helping people get their stuff online for over 20 years, so I'm pretty sure that makes him an expert. Hey Mark, what do you have for us today? Well, I'm going to give you a very brief list of what works for me. So this is the stuff that I use pretty much every day when I'm cataloging stuff to, to put it online in a catalogue or on my website. And the first object that I pick up is a bottle of, um, you call it dish soap, we call it washing up liquid, fairy or dawn, whatever it may be, you start with that. Put a towel in the bottom of the sink, fill it up with slightly lukewarm water and clean your objects. Having clean objects to start with makes all the difference. A lint-free cloth, you don't want little bits of fabric hanging around on the top. Furniture polish if you're photographing furniture. And of course, silver polish if you're do dealing with silver. Make sure the object is clean. And if you're being really fussy, or maybe handling something that's very shiny or, or, or like silver, a pair of white gloves would be good to stop yourself leaving finger marks on it. Obviously, you're gonna to have to let things dry. So once you've cleaned them and they're all sparkly clean, let them dry well. And for, for something like a decanter, which often takes ages and ages and ages to dry and you still get little water droplets inside it, roll up a little bit of um, kitchen roll, shove it inside and then stick it somewhere warmish or in the sun. And what you'll find is that it's almost like it wicks out the moisture. So the little roll of um, kitchen roll absorbs the moisture and sends it out and it dries out. There's another one that's often missed as well, and that's price stickers or inventory stickers, leaving a bit of sticky on the bottom. I always use lighter fluid, or I think you can buy proprietary um, sort of solutions for removing sticky, as I call it, the remains of labels, because you won't think it shows, and you take a load of amazing photos, and there it is on the bottom of the, the vase, whatever it might be you're shooting. You can see through the glass, and there's a little, little patch of sticky there, so you use that to remove it. That's going to take a little bit of time and use that time. Go into your office or your workspace, whatever it is, and clear space. I cannot tell you how important having space is. I mean, I can talk. I'm surrounded by objects everywhere now. But the first thing I do is move things out of the way. Even if you're photographing small pieces, you'll put it to the side. You might need to move somewhere. You don't want to be crashing into things and you want space to put things down, especially if they're heavy, very, very quickly. Speaking of photography, it's ideal to have um, a very large curve, so a plain or a graduated coloured background. Lots of people use grey down to white or various types of grey or just white. Tripods, absolutely essential. If you're using um, a if you're photographing large items, you're going to need a large tripod. And then I have another small tripod, which I can either mount my phone or a camera on for just doing small items. And the point of fixing um, a, a, a camera to a tripod really works if you're taking lots of photographs of the same thing from different angles because if you mark where it is within the curve or in the light box and you leave the tripod and camera in the same place you'll be able to get the same angle so as people move through your photos online you're seeing the same angle as if it's being sort of viewed in the round. You know the most useful thing um, with photography that I find, obviously apart from your camera and tripod and background, it's a massive lump of blue tack. Blue tack is the most useful thing when you're doing photography. You can use it for all sorts of things, fixing something in place, leaning things against it, moving things to an angle and putting it underneath to balance it, and even something like uh, photographing a large dish. So if you want to have the dish head on rather than lying down or at an angle, you can use a little bit of blue tack to sort of hold it in place at the bottom and then delicately balance it with your finger. And once you've got it balanced, you can actually get a shot. And then of course use a Photoshop or a photo editing suite to just clone out your finger at the top and the blue tack on the bottom. You really won't believe how useful investing in half a dozen packs of blue tack is. I mean, you've really given us an appreciation for all of the hard work and the tedious work and time it takes to selling online. My pleasure. I mean, I think much of that will be granny sort of being taught to suck eggs or whatever it might be. Many dealers will have those things, but I'm sure there are some, especially new to it, who, who perhaps don't. And my idea really was to sort of give not just a basic toolkit of things I think you need, but some sort of life hacks. And I think life hacks have become a thing now. So now we have antique hacks, although I don't like the sound of it. <laughs> of course, those are invaluable tools. Antique hacks. I love it. Stay tuned for part two.